So a lot of times you just need to quickly view 3D models to preview. Um, for example, I have my prototyping assets here. And by default, Windows is set up to use the 3D viewer. And you've probably noticed that it only works about 50% of the time, for me at least. This is just an FBX file. It's a very common format. And I get this a lot. I, this is not supposed to be a B. It did not open up correctly. And that's the default model you see when things just don't open up. So I went ahead and installed this app I found. Uh, this is a really neat replacement and it just works, which I love. It works with a lot of different formats and I haven't had any issues with it. It also has some other features like ray tracing and, um, well, let's just look at them right here real quick. So you can view animations. Um, it supports different rendering features like ambient occlusion, um, and you can kind of just generally customize the view, which I really like. F3D also makes it a lot nicer to browse through your uh, asset packs because the Windows model viewer, a lot of the times it can't open up certain files, which means it can't generate thumbnails for those. F3D just does. There is some setup that we're going to go over a little bit later um, on how to set up the lighting so you get better thumbnails. Otherwise, they come out a little bit too dark like this. And you're going to want to do that setup before you launch and run um, F3D and browse through your files. Otherwise, you're going to have to find out how to regenerate all these dark thumbnails. You can also take um, screenshots and maybe even video. I'm not sure. It also supports Gaussian splats, which is really nice. I haven't messed around with it, but it just seems like an all-in-one viewer. So you can download it either from the website right here clicking on this link here, or you can go to the GitHub repository and grab the most recent release from there. So this has a few more cool screenshots here. Let's just check them out. And here's a list of features. It also has a web viewer, which is really neat. Yeah, so a lot of cool features, wide support for a lot of 3D formats. Let's go over the install process. I've already downloaded the most recent version. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and walk through this. Uh, these are the options that I'm using. I'm using the the Windows installer. There is a portable version, but I want to use the installer so I can associate it with some common 3D file types. So we'll go ahead and install that. Okay, it's finished and let's go over configuring it. So right out of the box, when you open a model, it's kind of dark. And as you might have seen earlier, you can change the lighting. Um, one feature that I, well, not really a feature, but just a thing you got to deal with. When you hit a hotkey, it takes a few seconds to update. As you can see, I've just hit this key a few times and it's taking a while to increase the lighting. Um, luckily, you can actually set up your config file so it has a certain level of lighting when you open it up right away. So let's look at setting that up. If you head back to the main F3D page and you go to user documentation, down here at the very bottom, you'll see limitations and troubleshooting. This very first line has the key. Um, if we use this light dash intensity command, we can set the default lighting intensity of a scene when you open it up. So to um, edit that and add it to the config file, uh, we'll navigate to our install directory. And by default, if you use the installer, it'll be in your C drive, program files, in a folder called F3D. The config folders are stored in share, F3D, configs, config.d. And we are interested in this global.json file. You'll probably need to open it in an um, administrator if you don't have admin uh, privileges set up on your program files drive by default. So type in notepad, run as administrator. That's how you do that. You navigate to that file. I've already done so here. Here's the path in case you need it again. If you don't see any files here, go down to all files and then open up global.json. And we simply need to add a comma, new line, Four spaces. Light, uh, I believe it's light. 
open uh, quotes light dash intensity close quotes um, colon and then we'll set it to a value of 3.5 I found that's what works for me okay double check this we should be good as we save it close this out that takes care of the lighting in the main viewer now we need to edit the thumbnail lighting intensity so go back here to configs open up the other folder thumbnail.d and then we're going to open up the global.json file in there and do the exact same thing so let's open up that folder and that file i've got windows uh, notepad still in administrator view all files same thing open this up and i've already got this set up here uh, it's just the exact same option. So add that comma and then add this line here. And then try to open up a file again. Should be brighter this time. And there we go. So now we can see everything. Once again, use the H key to open up the command menu. There is no file bar or anything. This is how you interact with this is through hotkeys. Um, and then if you use the Q key, you can turn on ambient inclusion just to get a better sense of depth and placement of your objects. Now to set your file types, if you open up um, this default apps windows menu, you can type in your file types up here. So .fbx, and then I've already got this set up, but by default, you'll probably have this with the 3D viewer in this slot. You just click on this, and then you can click on your uh, F3D app. I think this will only work if you use the Windows installer. If you use the portable version of F3D, I don't believe Windows will have any way of detecting that this has been installed. So just keep that in mind. And yeah, so I've set this up for .fbx, .obj, and then also glb files, and then gltf files, just because the those are the, what Godot uses. So yeah, you can customize that to your heart's content, add all the different file types you want. And then once that happens, you should see the F3D icon right next to your objects. Um, and so far, this has worked really well for me. Uh, it's way more reliable than the Windows 3D viewer, and it seems to support a lot more different file types, as well as these cool uh, rendering options and features. I believe you can also take screenshots, like I mentioned earlier. So, yep, uh, that's about it. I hope you find this useful, like I have, and thank you.